Oh, yes. You read the title right. Mastering isn't as important as you think it is. What's up, geniuses? My name is Adrian Rivera. Welcome back to the channel where you learn to show your genius. My room is clean today, but you wouldn't notice because all the mess is always behind the camera. So, besides the point, we're gonna be talking about mastering today. Yes, don't get me wrong. Mastering is super important and you want to master your songs because that is like the bread and butter of your music. However, when I first started producing, I always found myself stressing about mastering way too much now that I look back at it. I spent so much time stressing about figuring out how to make a good master, but in reality, mastering isn't as important as we think it is. Now, I came to the realization that my music sounds good because of the work that I did with my mixing instead of my mastering. That's a little biased because obviously since I'm my own producer, I'm my own engineer, I'm my own everything, I have a bias towards my music. I'll play you a little clip of my latest song called Carried Away so that you guys can get a reference of how my music sounds like and you can be the judge for yourself. We interrupt this broadcast to show you the wall. Do we have a silver play button yet? No! What do we need? A silver play button. Why? Because this wall is empty. It's not empty, but this spot is. And we need to fill it to complete the wall. Just like Thanos needed six infinity stones, I need to finish this wall. What will happen? You gotta find out. So if you wanna be part of that journey, feel free to subscribe. I'm actually working on an entire series about the road to 100,000 subscribers. If you wanna check that out, feel free to click the icon up here. It's been a fun series and it's still going strong. The hardest choices require the strongest of wills. So subscribe. You don't want this wall to be blank for too long. You don't want it to be blank. So I'll get into why mixing is so much more important than mastering. But first, I wanna explain my mastering process a little more so you can get a reference to what I'm talking about. So when I start with my mastering, it kind of starts in the mixing phase of everything. In FL Studio, there's a preset that puts a limiter onto the master channel already for you so you don't even have to worry about it. But basically what I do, I used to not do this but I started doing it more frequently, is that I have a limiter on the master channel as I'm mixing so that wet everything that I'm mixing is going straight into that limiter. Therefore, I can always mix without ever clipping. Some people might not like that. Reason being is that since you're mixing with a limiter, you're technically not mixing in a vanilla way. However, I feel like it's helped me a lot with the volume in general of my song. And because I've been able to mix into that limiter, I feel like my songs in general have improved overall. That's not gonna be the same for everybody. You might like mixing into a limiter, you might not like mixing into a limiter. In terms of how I master, it usually starts off with a limiter in the master channel, and I do that simultaneously as I'm mixing. After that limiter, what I do is I get an EQ, and I EQ out anything that is below 20 hertz and over 20,000 hertz. The reason being is that for certain audio systems, like some speakers, there might be some frequencies that bleed, and those frequencies might resonate and make a piercing sound for the listener. And most of the time, those frequencies aren't even audible to the average human ear. So what's the point of keeping them in your mix when you can just take them out instead of letting them flood there so that there's that potential to cause problems? After that EQ, what I do is I add a little bit of compression, just very slight compression. Emphasis on the word slight. Reason being is that the compression molds everything together kind of like a glue in a sense. If you've ever heard of the term wall of sound, basically using a compressor is going to even out the dynamics of your song so that you get more of that pop sounding master. And by that, I mean like pop music that you hear on the radio. I got like hair in my eye or something. Now me, generally, I make a lot of pop music. So that makes sense for me. Most of the time you guys will probably end up doing that too. Even if you don't make pop music, I shouldn't say most of the time you guys are gonna be doing that. Mastering is up to you. But I'll say most of the time people do compress to get that sort of general pop radio sound. After that, I use a mid-side EQ. And for those of you that don't know, mid-side EQ is basically just EQing specifically the stereo and the mono of your song. So you get the stereo channels, you EQ specifically the stereo channels, whatever frequencies you wanna mess with on those channels. And then in the mono channel, you EQ that as well, and you pick out those frequencies and do whatever you want with that. That basically just gives you more control of the sound of the stereo of your song, and it actually does really add to the master. So 
I recommend doing that and learning a little bit more about that. And then after I do all that stuff, I bring in another limiter and that limiter basically just brings everything closer to zero without clipping the audio, of course. Now, even though what I just said sounds like a lot, it's really just the cherry on top of all of the mastering process. Really quickly, the Google definition of mastering is the process of preparing and transferring recorded audio from a source containing the final mix to a data storage device the source from which all copies will be produced. So basically, mastering is just a process that gets the song ready to be distributed to stores like Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, wherever your music is gonna end up going. With that definition in mind, it only makes sense that the focus of the song should be on the mixing and not the mastering. Reason being is because a bad mix can't be saved by a good master. Let me put it to you this way. So let's say you have a cake, right? You have the cake mix, you mix everything together, it's all good to go. You have the best oven that you could possibly get. This oven's super high quality. This is like a million times better than your standard easy bake oven. You get those ingredients and you put it in the oven, but let's say you added some cayenne pepper to that. Maybe you put in some pickles, or maybe you put in some hot sauce, and then you throw that into the oven. It's an oven. It's not gonna make your mix. See what I did there? It's not gonna make your mix sound any better or taste any better. The oven is there to put everything together, bake the cake in a sense, but it's not going to make a huge difference in taste. So if we put that into context of mixing and mastering, mixing is basically your main focus. You want to make sure that your mix is going to be super great so that when you bring it into the master, the master is just the icing on top. I had a lot of hot dogs. Personally, I feel like a lot of beginners worry too much about mastering and I was in that position as well. I don't know everything about mastering. I feel like I know enough to get by. Obviously, you guys heard what I could do. So you be the judge of if I know anything at all. I feel like I know a good amount. But from my experience, being able to mix my songs really well has done me so many wonders. And even though I'm not the best at mastering, there's definitely other people that know it way better than I do. My songs can still pass as radio quality songs in my opinion, because my mix is so good that when it comes into the mastering process, the mastering just brings everything together. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it adds a little bit. And because my mix was already so solid to begin with, the master is just the cherry on top. You got like a hair right here. I feel it dangling. So for you newcomers out there, you noobs, here are some of my tips for mastering. Volume isn't everything. One thing that a lot of producers tend to do is try to get their master to as loud as possible. If you're making your song super loud while diminishing the quality of the mix, you're probably not going to get the best sounding song. Reason being is that mixing is going to get you the sound that you want. When you're mixing, you get to nitpick all the different details. And if you end up making everything super loud in the master, all those fine details that you did in the mix are gonna be completely gone. So of course you want it to be loud enough so that people don't have to raise the volume when they listen to your song specifically. But if it's just slightly quieter than all the other songs you hear on Spotify, don't worry about it because if that's gonna diminish the quality of your mix, you shouldn't be boosting the volume that much. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind too is that your song goes through its own compression when it reaches those platforms. Reason being is so that all the songs can sound similar on those platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. So if your song isn't as loud as some other songs in Apple Music and Spotify, don't worry because things will happen afterwards so that everything is relatively the same volume, at least from my knowledge. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. I'm down to learn more, but I'm pretty sure that I'm right. Another tip is to not overdo anything when you're mastering. So for example, like I said, I like to add compression onto my master. Don't put so much EQ or compression to the point that you really hear it. So for example, if you have a compressor on your master and you crush it so that it sounds very pumpy in a sense, and you can totally tell that there is a compressor on your master, then you more than likely are doing it wrong. Now, obviously you want to be able to make a difference in your sound. Do whatever you need to do to make it sound better. Cause if it sounds better, then that's a good thing. But if it sounds overdone, if it's too compressed, if there's too much EQ taking out a certain frequency in your master, people are going to tell you most definitely will probably tell as well. Like we discussed mastering, is just the cherry on top, the icing on the cake. It's not really supposed to make a huge difference in your mix. It can add a lot, 
but don't overdo it to the point where it doesn't sound good anymore. Also, another thing, ask people about your master. If you have any producer friends that also make music, I guess producer friends would make music. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. If you have any producer friends, feel free to send over your track to them. Ask them, how did I do with this track? What do you think about it? If they could give you some pointers on how to get a better master, and even if they don't even know as much as you do, it's still good to get other ears to listen to something that you did. Reason being is that people are gonna have different opinions than you. So something that you might not have thought of or heard when you were mixing and mastering, they might be present in someone else's ears. And even if you don't have any producer friends, ask your friends, ask your family, hey, how does my mix sound? How does my master sound? And if they don't know any terminology at all for any production, just give them an unmastered and mastered version. Don't tell them which version is which and just say, hey, what sounds better, song one or song two? If they like the unmastered version better than the mastered version, you know you're doing something wrong with your master. Damn, been recording for 20 minutes already. Overall guys, make sure that you understand that mastering isn't as important as it seems. Yes, mastering is important. You should definitely master all of your tracks and try to get as good as you possibly can. Don't worry too much about it because what's more important is the mix. As long as you get a really, really good mix that sounds great on its own, even if you master it in the slightest, it'll come out as a great song. Remember, mastering cannot save a bad mix. If you are not a producer and you just sing or rap, feel free to check out my beat store, adrianvero.com, where I post my super high quality beats. I don't put anything on there that I wouldn't use myself. If you want some good quality beats to rap or sing over, feel free to check it out, adrianvero.com. I also have a beat channel if you wanna check that out as well. Feel free to subscribe to that so that whenever a new beat comes out, you can be the first to know. Also, subscribe to this channel. I don't care if you subscribe to the beat channel, just make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're trying to get that silver play button by the end of the year, and I made an entire series about it. So if you wanna check out that series, feel free to click the eye icon, the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe out there, eat a lot of oranges. Also, don't be afraid to show your genius. Baby, you call me, you tell me you're lonely. You know that I get you, but I've been so up in my room quarantine.